Good boy. Hey guys, Mark Brash and Protect Dog Training and the OG. Good boy, kid. Yay. Yes, good boy. Good. There you go. Good. I just had Luther out here, and I just kept calling him Lucifer because that's his original name. So I got to correct that. It's Lucifer. It's now Luther. And this is the OG. But what I was accenting with Luther was that he doesn't like the food as much. Yes. Good boy. Good. So. The OG, remember I put more time into him, he's a little bit of a butthead, and Luther's kind of been on the back burner, so now the customer's going to take him in a couple months, he's paying me for a couple more months training with Luther, so I'll put Luther to the front burner and kind of move him to the back, but what Luther doesn't have right now is enough food drive to make it really go, but what he did for me this morning is we went off and did agility, and he's really into chasing that ball. So I'll keep building a relationship with the animal and build the ball drive. Agility is going to build confidence. Keep doing this on a pattern. It really is heavy. And with the exercise, it's going to bring up drive. Stamina increases and drive will increase because now he's in better shape, right? So exercise matters, right? You get out there and do the right exercise, that's going to increase your drive states, right? So that's what we'll do with Luther for a while. Um, every dog is different. Every dog kind of goes through different phases. Not every dog is going to be the same, even the same litter on the same day. They have good days, they have bad days, and Luther right now is showing me he could give a hoot about these hot dogs. So I got to try to find out something that's better for him that he wants, try to uh, rob him of food the night before and try to increase his, his, um, his want for that food. And then we'll play some other tricks. Okay, there's a lot of different tricks. One of the things is that dogs are very social. So I can put them in that little cage over there, build some anticipatory, anticipatory want in a pattern attitude where you put him away, you work the another dog, he wants to get out of there, or you put him in there and you don't get him right away. He knows what's gonna happen because there's a pattern involved. When he comes out and he gets put into that cage, he knows he's gonna go to work. And with pattern and routine every day, every day, that anticipatory want is gonna build. That's gonna build my drive state, right? Um, you saw me talking about Grimm. I'm going to post that a little bit later today as well. Um, that's engagement that we're trying to create with Grimm. Get him high on the game, and the same thing applies a little bit. So a lot of this is about relationship and understanding how to build drive with the little tricks that you do, right? And so I talked a little bit about that with Grimm as well, right? I also mentioned on that video with Grimm, we were talking about um, motor movement. Well, motor movements is part of it, but that's actual muscle memory. When I mentioned that PVC pipe over the A-frame, the dog's gonna have to go under it, and then on the other side, you have two of them. So you have it on one side and then the other, and they both have PVC pipe that's been bent in a circle. It's gonna cause the dog to go under, and when he comes back over the other side, he's gonna wanna go under it again. And that creates a muscle memory, because you wanna keep the dog on the A-frame as long as possible so that he doesn't launch off the top. Now remember, I've talked about this before, in agility, they actually have target spots that, within the sport. The dogs are required to touch. Well, that's what they're doing the same thing within the sport because that's a high-speed type of a game, getting through all that little uh, agility course, and the dogs are required to hit certain touch spots in the game so that they create that muscle memory and the dog stays safer in that regard. They don't want to launch it off because all that speed with those really high-drive little dogs, they're using a lot of times the... Uh, Australian Shepherds, catalogs, they, all kinds of dogs play in that game, but at the same time, there's some, there's some logic behind what they put together in that agility as far as the sport of agility, right? Remember, when I'm talking agility out here, I'm using agility to build confidence. I'm not treating it as a sport. I'm using agility as a confidence builder, jumping up on things, going over things, walking that real tight little line he's got to do on the wacky board, changing direction and uh, pitch down and up and that's what the wacky boards are all about. There's a, a complete um, function that we're trying to do with certain things. And we'll go over that again another time, but I go over all this stuff intermittently all the time. So we've got uh, the OG out, we're gonna work him, and we're just trying to create a lot of engagement and get him after the food, the OG. The OG has a really active mouth. He wants to pick up everything. And I talked about it in one of my videos yesterday that I did not post. And it's the problem with him being a little turd, little butthead. He's getting out there wanting to pick up everything. So I'm going to start leaving him on the long line. Control factor and start correcting him for that. Every time he puts his mouth on something, I'll give him my little negative marker. 
and, and prop him out of it, right? And have to really work diligently. You notice him chewing on the table. Everything's about his mouth. And that's just who Gyoji is as a dog. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Good boy. Good. Yes. Good boy. Good. Yes. Good boy. Good. Kusha. Yeah. Smart little boy. Gyoji. Good boy. Good. Yes. Good boy. Good. Good boy. You see how he does on the balls? So then we're going to some ball play. It's done and it's over with. So um, I'm just trying to find out where he's at. He's doing a good job going one way and the other. He's not going to my left side as well as he is to the right. The rights are going to be your flip into the flip finish. So that's kind of the one where all most people are right, right handed. And dogs have right handed, left handed as well. Some dogs are stronger than others. But you want to balance it so that you always keep the dog doing both instead of just one sided. Otherwise, it'll get in your way. Good boy, good, yeah. <laughs> That's my boy. Good. Out. Out. Yes. Good boy, good. All right, so I see with both these guys, Luther and with Gyoji, that it's really important that I get engagement and a lot more play than I get worried about the behavior. So I'll do a little bit of the behavior and then right away break into this and pattern a routine day, every day. Every day, at least once in the morning, once at night, so they get used to that time pattern. Dogs are very cognizant of pa pattern. They love routine. You're going to get more drive when you come out and they're so anticipatory because they know what's coming, right? Good boy, good. Out. Yes. Good boy, good. His brain doesn't quite understand it yet, but unconsciously he knows that he's going to get something when he drops it. Watch him. Yoji, good boy, good. Yoji. Good boy, good. Out. Yes. Good boy. So I'm going to keep trying to build on this and make sure he understands the word out. Right away letting it go to get that second ball. Good boy. And the other one that you heard me talking about with Grim was when you quit. You want to keep it short and sweet. You don't want to get the dog to a point where he's mentally fatigued and he wants to shut down. You want to start stop it before he wants to shut, shut down and that he wants more, right? Again, where do you leave the dog's head in the work? Because it's real important. So if you leave the dog's head in excitement, good, we're good. We're going to drop it right there. Good, we're done. Good, we're good. Yay. So that when you leave the, the session, you leave right at that point where he wants more and excitement is really, the excitement level is real high and you put him away. The next time you come up, that's what he's going to remember. You're, again, you're building on where is the dog's mental state of mind in the work. That's going to get him to have more animation and everything else. It's real important. It's not just heel, sit down, stay, guys. It's a lot about where is the dog's head at in the work. So try not to forget that one. That's the most important thing I can give you in our little sessions that we did today. Again, I'm, I'm going to post two or three of them. And they're not all perfect, okay? A lot of trainers are out here and they're giving you this perfect look. They'll work one or two weeks, three weeks, they'll get it exactly where they want it, and then they post it. I'm showing you all the little rough edges and the good and the bad that you're working on. And you make mistakes. We're human. We're all human, okay? Um, I'm not perfect. I'm pretty good at what I do, but I'm not perfect, right? I can never stop learning, never stop growing, never stop reaching to learn and grow. Real important to have the right mental mind state in being professional because if you do, you're always going to be learning more. And in this trade, that's one of the funnest things that I love is that I never stop learning. So I have an attitude. I never stop wanting to reach to learn, right? Good boy, good. Yeah, good. What is that? What is that? He's barking at somebody walking on the property. So we're gonna do some do some agility, have some fun doing that, confidence building, keep him with me. Good boy, what is that? 
good boy. The OG has definitely got an, uh, an attitude about being protective. Even at his young age, he hits the fences, barks at people in the truck. He's pretty good. Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, and Neoji. Now you notice he has a pinch collar on. I'm not using it, I'm just letting him wear it. And I may not use it for three, four weeks, another month, who knows? But I'm getting him used to having it on his neck. Talk to you later.